Welcome back. So today, before we get into the recovery series, I just want to wrap up something on dynamic loading. I had a good question from my buddy Michael, uh, and he said, hey, can you tell me a bit more about this green day that you're moving around, and that seems to be one of the key loading days in the system? Yes, I can. Let's do it. All right. Shrink me down. Slide me over. So the principle with the green day or an endurance day is that the duration creates the difficulty. And what I mean by that is it's not the pace or the power or the relative intensity that's going to create the difficulty. It's the time that's going to do the work for us. And a green day could be a multi-sport day. Uh, in our combinations chapter, we talk about a do-everything day where we swim, bike, run, maybe even include strength training. Uh, triathletes do a lot of these sorts of days uh, where we mix all the sports. And if you're a runner or a marathoner, it might be a day where you do uh, you mix cycling and running to take yourself all the way up to your expected duration of your race. So it's a duration focused day. And if you decouple, and what I mean by that is if the duration changes the nature of the workout so that the heart rate will start to move away from the power and the pace, so it's going to climb away from the power and the pace typically, and that's a sign that we've gone past our general capacity. So what's happening is the stress, the internal stress of the workout is changing the nature of the workout. So either it's time to shut it down and acknowledge that this duration is probably pretty close to our current limit, or it's a sign that we haven't actually set our targets correctly. So that's something that we can flush out with the green day. Next point is no strain. And what do we mean by that? We mean that the fatigue from the green day is going to clear by the following day. So we could repeat this day, these two green days. If we were doing back-to-back -back green days, we could do the same thing twice in a row and we'd be in good shape. If that's not the case, then we're challenging ourselves with duration. You need to be careful with that though, because if you create strain, and then meaning multi-day recovery, and then you have a challenging day the following day, either another challenging green day or a peppy day or a strong day, you can tip yourself over and you're going to lose the ability to stack the weeks that we talked about in part two. Now within the system, I talked about switching the green day and the velocity oriented day. I also talked about switching the strength day and the green day. So the green days are the days where we have the most flexibility with the total load we give ourselves. Now remember, load is a mixture of intensity plus duration. That's going to give us what the load is. Now the load is also the mode because a three-hour easy bike ride will impact an experienced athlete very differently than a three-hour easy run. So the mode of exercise comes in. So you need to be flexible with how you're mixing your sports within your green day. Uh, that duration as well has an impact. So I'll just give you an example. Uh, let's say easy 30-minute run followed by an easy one-hour ride. So that's a 90-minute block of exercise. Good little block. I kind of consider 90 minutes about a, a unit for endurance. But because I ran first and then rode second, I was pretty fresh for that run. It was easy. That, that unit's not going to take much out of me. Change that around. A 90-minute unit where all I do is I run trails that are kind of technical trails going up and down. The change in elevation as well as the fact that it's 90 minutes running is going to impact me very differently. That would not be considered an easy day for me. But for a well-trained athlete, the 30-minute run followed by a one-hour easy ride, that could actually be an easy day. So you have the ability on these green days to manipulate the mode of exercise as well as the duration of each mode for how much total you're going to be giving yourselves. The other thing is on these green days, it's important to fuel them, particularly if you are backing it up the following day. So I never recommend depletion training. I always recommend you fuel yourself. And part of that is for these multiple days and the ability to stack the weeks. Finally, breaking up the workout 
and breaking up when you're using multiple sports can change the nature of the same training. Let me give you an example of that. Uh, a day where you're going to swim, bike, and run. So two years ago, my long day consisted of riding to the pool, doing a long master's uh, freestyle-oriented workout, and then taking the long way home. So that had a climb in it. But the whole thing was done aerobically. And then when I got home, I would do a transition run on the treadmill. Back then, it was a big dose for me. But it was broken. In other words, I'd eat breakfast, spin easy to the pool, and then I would have sports drink during my swim at the pool. Afterwards, I'd relax for a little bit, have a small meal. Then I would ride. I'd have sports drink on the ride, come home, chill out for a bit, maybe even have a recovery drink, and then do an easy run. Very different than compressing all of that and trying to get the training done as quickly as possible. So by breaking up the workouts, breaking up the green zone training, we can make that day an easier day on ourselves. Same thing in reverse, race specific day, we're gonna compress all that training relatively quickly. That's gonna force us into having sports nutrition the whole time. We're not gonna have periods of the day when we're exercising or between exercising where our heart rate is down. So that's gonna make it tougher to process the nutrition. So all of these factors can come into play for you. So when I say a green day, there's a big range. Uh, it can be anything from an easy day to a very challenging uh, race specific workout that is focused on the green zone, zone one, zone two. Now, if you're a top, a very top amateur or an elite, you can actually get yourself to the point where you can train for your race duration in zone one or zone two and it's not particularly challenging for you. So when you're at that stage, these race specific days will have periods usually of zone three mixed in or it'll be periods of race-specific pace, which may be zone two pace, but it'll be quite demanding. And I'm thinking about here, um, a fast amateur training for an Ironman marathoner, uh, Ironman marathon off the bike, or a marathoner, where that pace kind of falls into that zone two, zone three kind of area. And it's a little bit of a gray zone for endurance training, but it would be race-specific, core pace work that might be built into these green days. So it all really depends. There's a wide range of how stressful these days will be on your body. And having them in your week combined with the easy days is how we're going to manipulate that dynamic load. And we're going to continue. Remember, the idea is to continue to stack these weeks week after week and be willing to postpone and dial down the workouts. The ones we postpone are typically the peppier ones, and then the ones that we dial down are typically the green zone ones, and that's how the system works. Thanks for listening. Recovery series kicks off next week.